In a 6 o'clock news release last Monday evening, the governor announced she'd fired her education secretary after six months on the job. With not even a full semester of school behind her, New Mexico faces challenges with its public school system in general, but also specifically when it comes to underserved groups like native at risk, bilingual students, a big group there. Now, the big question is why? Here to pose some possible answers, our line opinion panelists. Former state senator Diane Snyder, a frequent guest at this table, is here. We also welcome back Ed Perea. He's a lawyer and public safety expert. Here for his second run at the table, Dave Mulryan, founder of Everybody Votes. And it's great to have former Lieutenant Governor Diane Dennis back for sure. Welcome to all of you. Now, Diane, Karen Trujillo has been far more vocal about her dismissal than the governor and her people have been. I have a couple of questions about leadership and some other things I want to kind of parse out here. But does Ms. Trujillo have a point when she says, this was the first I heard that there were issues here. I, I, she seems kind of taken by surprise in, in this situation. That can happen sometimes where yes. high level firing is not necessarily handled as if it's a low level firing. It's a very difficult thing to do. How is it handled in it's your view? It's not like they gave performance reviews and, and, right. and uh, improvement well said. Uh, set mm -hmm. sheets. But um, the, the governor's office said communication and leadership. Yes. So I, uh, those two words can mean a whole lot or mean nothing. Mm -hmm. I, I, uh, it, I, uh, none of us disagree that the governor has, you serve with the pleasure of the governor right. every secretary, and she has the right to have who she wants. Mm -hmm. But I think in this case, we as the public and the legislature particularly, because I talked to several over the last couple of days, mm. um, we were so enamored with her credentials right. and this team. Yes. We believed even, and, and I heard this from many of my Republican colleagues mm -hmm. and, and, and myself, I look at it and I went, I think by golly, we've hit the right right mix here, right. we're gonna get something done. Mm -hmm. And and so suddenly it's like, oh, we believed in something and now it's going away, so what's gonna happen now? Right. And legislators put in all that money. I, I The question is, does mm -hmm. the governor owe us as the public an explanation? Maybe not the public, right. but I think if I was still sitting in the Senate, as a legislator, I would want a little more information than communication and leadership. That's a good point. I, I could agree with that too. David, let me read you some partly from the governor's quote sure. here. Two words jumped out at me. It is absolutely imperative that we genuinely transform public education in the state. We all get that. This is the sentence. We must identify a vibrant and ambitious new leader for the public education department as quickly as we possibly can. Vibrant and ambitious. Two interesting choices of words there. I, I get the feeling this is about style points as much as it is about anything else, that she needed, she, she being the governor, wanted someone who could really be a cheerleader and rally a lot of people. Well, I'm not sure if she was feeling she was absolutely, getting that. Absolutely, but, but I think mm -hmm. one of the things, you know, we elected the governor. She won by a significant margin. Sure. And I think she's taken the opportunity to say, she's sending a signal, I am going to be an activist governor. Okay. She is sending the signal to us as the public and the people who voted for her. She is sending the signal to the other cabinet secretaries. If you are not meeting a standard that I have and that she probably made clear to the, the, the people that staff, you know, these cabinet departments or, or the, the But do we know that? Secretary, we don't know that, I'm guessing. I'm making the thing, but I'm going to give the governor the benefit of the doubt. We show up in the bottom three of education every single time. Mm -hmm. We can't be the 51st because there's no farther to go down. Right. I think that immediate and, and maybe swift action is actually called for. You know what, if she looked at that department, she wasn't getting communication, she didn't mm -hmm. feel like she was getting what she was asking for, mm -hmm. there was nothing in the press saying this is a bold new vision that we're having for New Mexico public education, mm -hmm. maybe the cut was the right way to go because mm -hmm. these things don't tend to get better. And so I'm in favor of quick action, we have got to have good public schools. It is the foundation of a democracy. It's the foundation of the economy. Mm -hmm. And I think whatever it takes is absolutely appropriate. You know, Ed, all of us in this position, this, this table, we've all been in a position to let someone go at some time right. or another. It's a very difficult thing to do. Right. It's a hard thing to do. And I think, you know, Dave's onto something here in a little, in a sense. Sometimes you know in your gut it's not going to work right. when you're the boss. You just know that person, you made a bad hire, 
you got to bite the bullet and let this person go. Was that your sense of this as well, that the governor just didn't quite, she can't quite articulate it, but sometimes you just know. You, you know what I mean? It's hard to say out loud, but you just get it. That's right, know? Gene. And, and yeah. there, there are two sides to, to this issue, or maybe multiple sides mm -hmm. to look at this issue. Mm -hmm. But one of, them is, one of them is from the leadership standpoint. As the governor, if you're going to make a decision, if something doesn't feel right, and this is such a huge issue for New Mexico, and there is, there's quite a bit at stake, mm -hmm. it's better to do it sooner than later than kick that can down the road, and maybe things will change. And the governor, as Dave mentioned, as we all know, even was elected by a, by a wide margin and the expectations for her are high there is a, a the expectations on part of the community and the, the education community that that something is done with public education we have this huge lawsuit looming over That's us right. Martinez Yazi. Right. I sat on the uh, the Latino education task force who spearheaded the Martinez side in working with with Maldef and so we talk a lot about this issue and we were excited about the new Secretary of Education, the last time I, I was here a couple of times ago on In Focus, mm -hmm. we all sung uh, Mr. Trujillo's praises and we That's thought right. we're moving in the oh, right yeah. direction. We spoke to teachers and it was, it was an exciting time. And now right. we have to take a step back and, and for the new leader, there's probably some trust and some mending that's going to have to take place. There have been some new things that have been added to whoever the new leader mm -hmm. of, of education is. That's so right. there's some other things that we're going to have to work through trust is going to have to be rebuilt because if there was skepticism That's right. with the process, now that this change was made, people are going to are wondering, well, what's going on here? Good so. point there. You know, Lieutenant Governor, uh, sometimes you get a feeling you can fire someone. Sometimes in our journey, we can realize down the road we fired too quickly. That happens too. That actually does happen too. I got to wonder though, if there's got to be some impact on the department this year. We have this dream team. We certainly have a more than competent number two who could easily be number one in this position. I'll get to that in a second. But is there some downside here in your view as you see the school year starting to not have someone at the head of PED? Or does it not really matter for the short term just to get things going? Well, I think in the communities what matters is having strong leadership in the community as school gets mm -hmm. underway. That's, but they need somebody at the at, uh, public ed that's going to be able to guide them should they need it, should they need it. So local communities, there's so much happening there, they're probably not even paying too much attention. I was surprised, mm -hmm. and, and as we said, it's the governor's prerogative, I was surprised that there wasn't some advance notice to some of the people who were gonna be the most surprised, uh, meaning teachers, right. um, some legislators, right. um, and it sounds like to me the department, in, um, the people in the department, uh, were shocked as well. Um, so they, the governor says they had been communicating the, the problems. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you hear it differently. That's right. Uh, and the governor herself did not communicate the different direction right. uh, message That's at right. the end of it. So uh, Secretary Trujillo is probably wondering, really trying to figure it out and, and uh, like an exit interview, you know, like sure. what really did go wrong here? And mm -hmm. I'm confident she will find uh, good employment. I will say, mm -hmm. reference to the lawsuit, Please. as well as the um, big number of money that came into K3+, mm -hmm. plus, 122 million, and they weren't able to actually use all that money. Right. I think this is probably a different philosophy about uh, we have the money, and their capacities there. It's right. really not right. yet. Right. And they tried <coughs> to do something in kind of a hurry. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that will happen when school districts, but th at the end of the year, they were saying six more weeks, right. same teacher, same classroom, same kids. Yep. And teachers said, uh, I've made plans, That's we're right. tired, That's we're right. not going to do does it. So they were unable on, does to. Does that fall on Ms. Trujillo, though? I mean, there's a little, there's it, some hinting out there that she did not push that end of the deal. Well, there right. have been better you know. benchmarks on understanding mm -hmm. because I know they did a couple sc elementary schools in Albuquerque okay, yeah. in APS. That's right. But in these rural areas where you don't have a lot of teacher uh, pool That's right. to yeah. call on to come in. Right. And one of the keys that I think is that the student and the teacher, it will be the teacher that the student will follow them. Right. And so that's even a more of a challenge to get that in a rural that's area. Right. That's so right. maybe we should have said, okay, this is the benchmark for this school year and do this. And then by the next year, and I understand mm -hmm. wanting to go in and, and do everything and change right. everything and make it better right now. Mm -hmm. But but the reality sometimes steps in the way. 
And, and so the question in my mind is, did Secretary Trujillo understand, was she thinking benchmarks, we're, we've got right. this many going in, we'll be able to accomplish this in the next, and didn't understand that that That's was right. not. So on That's that right. issue, I do think she probably Better wrap understood. up so real quick. She, mm -hmm. she probably did understand, yeah. but the capa whether the capacity of those teachers to do the work That's right. was there. And the Yazi lawsuit now is going to be very topsy-turvy right. because of uh, Judge Singleton's death. She was the, the um, judge. Point. Yeah. So That's there's right. going to be, it it's probably is a good time if there was going to be a change to make right. a change because um, you know you're going to have a new judge in That's the right. lawsuit. They're going to be looking at it again. That's good point. There's different things that are happening. I, I will say impatience mm -hmm. is, a, is both a blessing and a curse. It can happen. And of course, we have a nationwide search now to find a new uh, head of our education department. But it can also be that when you show a quick trigger, that can also be an impedance on people applying for the gig. Yeah. So there's, there's, there's consequences for everything. All right, out of time. After the break, we look at the record of slavery here in New Mexico's past.